Dude, that thing is fast. So give me give me your thoughts, John. What do you think? It's awesome, man. Yeah. It fucking blew me away. <laughs> it's <bad. laughs> no lie. It's bad. It's a fast, dude. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Daily DVR. I am very, very excited to get this envelope from Canada today. And it's from Airblade UAV. And in here is a Airblade UAV Eclair 3 inch Pro. So this is uh, pretty cool. Let's take a look at what we got. So it looks like we got the frame, some hardware, and a battery strap. Here's the bottom plate. My ruler's not long enough. It's about 160. I think I think it's also at 158 motor to motor. Side plates, two of them. And battery strap, standoff screws. So this is basically a very, very big brother of a, a, the Eclair 2-inch frame which I fly a lot. I happen to like this frame quite a bit. It's more of a stretched X, so you can see the size comparison or the difference between the two and the three is quite a bit. And this is more of a stretched X, and this guy is true X. So you do have holes for both, both a 30 millimeter stack or a 20 millimeter stack, so you can fit either one. And it looks like there's gonna be a lot of room inside I want to get a run cam split and I'm kind of waiting for the run cam split two to come out. We'll go ahead and assemble this thing and see how it looks put together. Let's see what we get for the weight. With the hardware, 44.7 grams. So not the lightest three inch frame out there, I guess, but uh, pretty light, lighter than like a Japalur. I, I would think it's Japalur is 51 grams or something like that. Respectable. So here we go. We've got all our parts. DYS F4 flight controller. 20 amp all-in-one ESCs, gonna use some 850 batteries, got some Brother Hobby uh, 1407 3600 kV motors, Luminaire Axie antenna, Run Cam Mini, uh, eventually I'm gonna be putting in a Run Cam Split 2, I have that on order, just came out, so waiting that for that to come in. And that's about it, so we're gonna get started here. Yeah, I can't wait to get this thing built in in the air, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Two hours later. So here we are, I got the first kind of part of the build done. Uh, I've got my motors bolted on here. David was nice enough to print me some TPU soft mounts, so I've got those installed. The flight controller that we're using does have some grommets in the holes, but the, so the problem is vibration will transmit through the pin. I did go ahead and use some TPU soft mounts um, underneath the ESC to help keep the vibrations from coming through to the flight controller. We'll go ahead and put this on so this is Really nice the way this works. So this is just going to sit on top and the little pins are gonna to connect to the little header on the ESC and that will be that for this. And so that's our little stack. We've got our ESC ready to go. Our flight controller's connected. Um, so the next step will be to start to wire up our receiver and our FPV gear. Yeah, it's coming along. Five hours later. And voila, here we go. Did have David print me this nice backpack in pink. You can get these from Airblade UAV. They're also nice enough to share the file on Thingiverse so you can print them yourself. I've got GemFan 3052 tri-blades installed on here right now for the props. So decent amount of pitch there. Run Cam Mini, 
got my XM plus antennas this way. So what I like about this is the, there's like really nothing to catch on the top. Um, we've got this nice hole for the Axie antenna in the back and hole for the buzzer here as well. If you land upside down, really nothing to, should be good. I really like that. You know, that way nothing can get shorn off or snagged. Left a little bit of room in here for the run cam split board should be able to fit right on top of the stack. I might have to move the receiver, which I've got strapped to the bottom of the backpack. Just a little VTX 03, 200 milliwatt switchable in here. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the way this came out. Let's see where we're at with the weight. Without the battery, looks like we're at 187.2. So a little bit on the heavy side. I did choose to stay with XT60 instead of going with XT30. I probably could have saved some weight there. And then the backpack adds a little bit of weight. So not horrible, but um, again, not the lightest three inch quad you could build, but that's okay. Cause I think it's going to be pretty tough the way I've got it. And with the battery 290. So yeah, we're, we're a little bit above. I was kind of shooting for 250. I mean, I probably could ditch the backpack and maybe use a smaller battery, but uh, we'll see how it flies at that weight. I, I think it's going to have enough power with these motors and, and, and these props. We'll see how it goes. So what we're going to do is we'll do a little bit of a hover test to make sure everything is working okay. And then I'll kind of run through the beta flight setup and and then we'll take it out to a park and I'll fly a little bit and maybe we'll do some speed runs and see how it goes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the way it came out. I, you know, like I said, a little bit heavier than I kind of had envisioned, but I think we'll be okay. I think it'll be fine. I do have the mini in here now. I kind of did that on purpose because uh, the split's going to have the, the same size front end camera and then the additional weight of the board. 2.3 millimeter lens on this guy. I like it. And we'll fly it, we'll see how it flies. Stay tuned and let's see how it is. Enjoy. Okay, so first time taking it up in the air. Everything seems to be working okay. Nothing's blowing up. Camera looks okay. Video transmission quality looks decent. I'll just try some really kind of short punch outs here, make sure nothing comes loose. And yes, successful. So pretty happy with that. All right, we'll go take it someplace where we get a little bit of space and we'll fly it for real. So far, so good. All right, so let's get plugged into beta flight here and we'll, I'll show you where I'm at so far. So the first thing I did was go ahead and flash the most recent release of beta flight, which is uh, right now 3.2.1, and that went very, very smoothly. Got my FreeSky XM Plus on UART1, that's set up right. Running at 8K, 8K for the PID loop. And SBUS is set up. DSHOT 600. Got the default motor idle throttle there. OSD is on, anti-gravity and dynamic filter is on. My beeper settings here. I'm not using the current meter because I am powering the uh, battery off of uh, the ESE. So I am fortunately don't have access to the current meter on the flight controller, that's okay. Fail safe set. PID tuning is pretty much stock. I have uh, adjusted a little bit, bumped up the yaw a little bit. These seem okay. I still have a lot of tuning to do. So this is a pretty good baseline. It's flying pretty good. And then for filtering, because I do have dynamic filtering on, so we've got PT1. And, huh, okay, so this is new. Normally you set this to zero, so I don't know if the configurator updated, but yeah, we're gonna turn off the gyro notch filter and the D-term filter. When I had set this up earlier, there used to be a value here you would set to zero. So I'm thinking the configurator, yeah, 3.2.2 might have updated. So we're going to go ahead and turn those back off. They were off, but I guess with the configurator update, things are a little bit different in here. It makes more sense to have a button in here. That's cool. I'd have to set that to zero. That wasn't really super intuitive. Okay, yeah, everything looks good here. That's all off, off. 
And like I said, I already had these filters turned off. I guess updating the configurator kind of reset them to on because they changed that. So we'll save that. And let me just make sure that that stayed. Okay, good. Uh, receiver did go ahead and make sure all my values centered out. Uh, 1,000, 2,000, 1,500 in the middle. I did change the stick low and stick high to 1025 and 1975. I do use a slight amount of dead band just to kind of the tiny bit of jitter, get rid of that. So that's set to one and one mode. So I've got arm on a switch, angle mode, which I only really use when I, if I need to fly line of sight for some reason, my beeper and then air mode. And my OSD, this is kind of my standard OSD setup. You can kind of set that up however you want. So yeah, I mean, uh, if you guys want, I'll share a CLI dump, but um, I'm not really done tuning at the moment yet. So these values may change. I did go ahead and add some anti-gravity gain. So I've got the 3.5 and like, it's pretty close to default stock here and it's flying pretty well. So yeah, stay tuned for DVR from the park. And that's gonna be about it for this. Uh, really, really happy with this build so far, uh, pretty fast. It's flying great, uh, like the frame, like the setup of the motors and the flight controller. I'm, I'm very pleased with the way everything came out. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one and enjoy. Thank you.